We live in the most exciting era of space exploration since the first people headed towards the moon. But this time, instead of being spearheaded by government agencies, it's private corporations that are leading the way. SpaceX is well ahead of the rest of the pack with their advanced rocket designs. So for today's video, we're going to count down 15 of the most amazing SpaceX landings. Number 15. The 200th Landing SpaceX has now pretty much perfected the reusable rocket technology to such an extent that, amazingly, on June 12, 2023, the company successfully performed its 200th landing. The Transporter 8 mission had taken off from Launch Complex 4 at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, with a payload of 72 satellites that were being delivered to orbit. Everything went smoothly with the launch, surrounded by clear skies for a perfect view. The Falcon 9's first stage detached and then started making its way back down to the ground. It can be seen making its final descent burn above Vandenberg's landing zone 4, which is just a short distance downrange from the launch pad. And you can see clearly the landing legs deployed from the base of the rocket before it makes an impressively controlled touchdown. There's so little turbulence that very little dust is thrown up into the air, and the rocket was visible through all stages of the landing, which is rare at this site because there's usually some fog or debris that obscures the view. In making the 200th landing, SpaceX has further established itself as the leading private space company, and for now at least, no one else has come anywhere close to being able to compete with them. Number 14. SN8 there's no avoiding the fact that when you're flying rockets, you need to extensively test your designs to make sure they're safe. And it's during these flights that you want things to go wrong so you can improve the designs. So long as there's no one on board or there isn't some extremely valuable cargo being carried, every incident can be a learning moment and be overcome. And that's what happened with a Starship prototype called S8N in December of 2020. It was being used for a high-altitude test where the plan was for it to reach a height of around 7.8 miles, or about 12.5 kilometers, and then perform a series of aerial maneuvers before setting back down at the landing pad. Taking off from SpaceX facility near Boca Chica in southern Texas, the 165-foot or 50-meter tall vehicle looked incredible as it rose into the sky and performed beyond expectation. That was, though, until it came to the final phase, the landing, as it approached the ground with too much speed. Just six minutes and 42 seconds after liftoff, it had turned into a huge fireball, something that was said later to be the result of a fuel header tank pressure being too low. Luckily, this was a test, and Elon Musk said shortly afterwards that the team had gathered all the data that was needed. So despite its fiery end, this was seen as a successful attempt. Number 13. The Crew-1 Splashdown after more than a decade of extensive testing, designing, redesigning, and the development of completely new technologies and systems, SpaceX has built a craft that was certified to take humans into orbit, and it was contracted by NASA to be the first manned launch from the U.S. since the final shuttle flight in 2011. Known as the Crew-1, the Crew Dragon spacecraft launched from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle on the 16th of November 2020, and it took the four-person crew to the International Space Station. It was an incredible moment for SpaceX and for the American space industry as a whole, and ended the complete reliance on Russian Soyuz spacecraft to travel to the space station. After 167 days in space, though, it was time to return home. So on the 1st of May 2021, the crew boarded the Dragon capsule that had been docked for that time and began their journey back to Earth. The following morning, the parachutes opened on the capsule to give a calm and controlled descent, and it landed safely in the Gulf of Mexico, close to Panama City Beach in Florida. Seen as an overwhelming success, and in many ways bringing spaceflight into the modern age after having used much older designs previously, there have now been six flights to the ISS with the Dragon spacecraft for NASA, as well as several privately funded ones and an all-civilian tourism flight too, meaning the founding dreams of SpaceX are quickly becoming a reality. Number 12. SN15 Taking place on the 60th anniversary of the United States' first crewed spaceflight, SN15 was a high-altitude test of SpaceX's latest Starship prototype. Glimmering in the flames because of its stainless steel construction, the craft took off from SpaceX facility in Boca Chica in the afternoon on May 6, 2021, and soon reached its target altitude of 6.2 miles, or 10 kilometers. From there, it began performing in-air maneuvers, such as a belly flop roll that will eventually be needed when this new design of ship is put into service, and everything went exactly as intended. 
Finally, it headed back towards a reinforced concrete landing pad and made a soft touchdown. What makes this landing particularly important is that it was the first time the SpaceX-designed Starship had successfully managed to land, with all previous attempts having ended in the destruction of the vehicle. And this is proof that it is a viable concept, that the company is getting much closer to it being a safe design, and that everything is headed in the right direction. For this test, they had reworked the avionics and software, the propellant architecture, and used an adjusted engine design, and its success means they're one step closer to finalizing the ship that they hope will ultimately take humans and cargo to the moon and beyond. Number 11. Arabsat 6A Now, not only does SpaceX build impressive rockets and spaceships, but the company manages to do things in a way that captures the imagination of countless people around the world. And there's perhaps no better example of this than what happened in April of 2019. On the 11th of that month, the company launched an Arabsat satellite into space on a Falcon Heavy launch vehicle, a choice that was made by the client because this particular rocket has the ability to take satellites into a higher orbit and therefore extend their operational lifespan. The launch went exactly as expected, and ultimately resulted in the satellite being put precisely where Arabsat had wanted, and it's now a core component for providing communication systems to the Arab League of Nations. As part of the way Falcon Heavy works, there are two side boosters that detach once they've used all their fuel that's used for the initial lift, and they're part of the reusable systems that are designed to return safely to land on the ground. With typical SpaceX style, though, and the world watching on, these two boosters performed an almost perfectly synchronized landing on landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral, in what's one of the most spectacular displays of rocket performance that's ever been caught on camera. You could almost believe that this was CGI that was created for a movie, but the more SpaceX experiments with ideas, the more we'll be treated to unbelievable events like these. Number 10. SN9 on February 2, 2021, the designers and engineers of SpaceX were focused on their facility near Boca Chica Village in Texas, as this was the day for the latest test of their Starship prototype. Known as SN9, which stands for serial number 9, the 165-foot or 50-meter tall craft was the ninth iteration and was scheduled for a high-altitude flight. Like others, it was made from stainless steel, so looked incredible in the sunlit sky. And to begin with, everything was proceeding as expected. It lifted off from the launch pad at 2.25 p.m. local time and reached the planned altitude of 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers. Each of the three Raptor engines switched off sequentially, and the SN9 performed a complicated horizontal flip maneuver, which sent it back down towards the landing pad. It was at this stage that things began to go wrong, however, and just six and a half minutes after takeoff, it landed on the pad hard and had soon turned into a huge fireball. On this occasion, there were two main issues. The approach speed towards landing was far too fast, and the vessel hadn't been able to get vertical either. As always with rocket tests, however, the team overseeing this one remained confident that the data they collected was worthwhile and showed them a lot about how the vehicle performed during subsonic re-entry, which was the main purpose of this test. It was definitely an amazing and spectacular end to the test, even if it wasn't exactly how things were meant to go. And it just showed that in the words of the principal integration engineer who was interviewed shortly afterwards, we've just got to work on that landing a little bit. Number 9. A Shortfall of Gravitas as well as pioneering the concept of reusable rockets to majorly reduce the overall cost of sending craft into space, SpaceX has also developed new technologies to work hand-in-hand -hand with this approach that makes things even cheaper and safer. One of these is the idea of using floating landing platforms which are built onto the decks of remote-operated drone ships. One of the newest and most advanced of these ships that are used by the company is called a shortfall of gravitas and it was available at Port Canaveral in Florida from mid-July of 2021. This perfectly matched with a planned Falcon 9 launch from the Kennedy Space Center around six weeks later to take the CRS-23 Dragon cargo resupply craft to the International Space Station. So, before its launch, a shortfall of gravitas was sent to a predetermined spot in the Atlantic Ocean. CRS-23 launched as planned at 3.14 a.m. local time on August 29th, and just under eight minutes after liftoff, the first stage of the Falcon 9 had detached footage was captured as it descended back towards the ocean and managed to safely land on the waiting ship. As soon as it touched down, a robot called the Octograbber engaged and held on to keep it steady, and a shortfall of gravitas could then begin making its way back to port. Once there, specialized cranes are able to remove the Falcon 9 stage so it could be assessed and refurbished for its use in a future mission. 
Number 8. CRS-6 There's very good reason why SpaceX has invested so heavily in being able to land its reusable rockets on ships. And that's because there's always a risk in trying to recover assets to use again, and if anything goes wrong, it's best to keep the incident as far away from people or critical infrastructure as possible, at least in the early stages of developing the technology. CRS-6 was a commercial resupply mission that SpaceX was conducting for NASA to take cargo to the International Space Station in April of 2015, and it was the sixth overall that they had done. It involved sending a Dragon cargo spacecraft on the second version of the company's Falcon 9 rocket, and this successfully inserted the Dragon craft into orbit. This was very early on in the testing of reusable rockets, though, and SpaceX used the opportunity to attempt landing the first stage on a new floating platform called the Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship. The booster had been fitted with new technologies to assist with this, such as grid fins and landing legs, and as this was the first time the company had attempted to do it, it was hoped that this would be the first time ever that any space company or agency had managed to vertically land a vehicle launch booster. As soon as you see the footage of it approaching the floating platform, though, you can see things aren't going smoothly. The booster struggled to stabilize itself and was wobbling from side to side all the way down to the platform. With smoke building up around the ship, the booster lands at an angle, but at first it almost looks like it has somehow managed to stick the landing. In just a few seconds, however, you see the very top of the booster, which hasn't been obscured by smoke, falling over, and then an explosion destroys everything. As always with SpaceX tests, though, the engineers arguably learned more in this failure than they would have done if it had been successful, and it wasn't long until they had improved the design to a point where the first successful landing could take place. Moving on to number 7, the 100th Falcon 9 flight. With a much more cost-effective launch option for companies wanting to operate their own satellites, SpaceX has made space more accessible than ever. But as well as making this available to other organizations, it's using it for its own objectives too. One service that everyday people can already use is Starlink, which is a network of hundreds of satellites in orbit that provide high-speed internet access, something that's invaluable to those in countries that don't already have an infrastructure, or those who live in places that are so remote that traditional cables aren't feasible. It seems fitting, then, that the company's 100th flight of a Falcon 9 launch vehicle was used to deploy a further 60 Starlink satellites into orbit. Taking off in late November of 2020, it was also a record-breaking mission because the fact that it was the first time that a reusable Falcon 9 booster was used for the seventh time, and as it had done six times previously, it detached from the ship a few minutes into the flight and began a controlled descent back towards an autonomous spaceport drone ship that was waiting a few hundred miles northeast of Cape Canaveral in the Atlantic Ocean. The booster, which itself is designated B-1049, ignited its engine shortly before reaching the ship to slow itself down, and with its landing gears deployed, it was able to touch down safely on the ship, which is called, Of Course I Still Love You. While this was its seventh time doing this, Elon Musk had said that each of the boosters should be able to be used as many as 10 times with only minor fixes in between, and as many as 100 times with periodic overhauls before being completely replaced. Number 6. Iridium-1 Iridium is a satellite communications provider that operates a constellation of satellites in orbit that are arranged in a way that means you'll be able to connect with at least one no matter where you are on Earth. The network was, however, aging, but the new opportunity provided by SpaceX meant that the company was able to schedule a series of launches to insert new satellites into orbit. And the first of these was Iridium-1, which launched from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California on January 14, 2017. It was the first launch of a Falcon 9 rocket for several months after issues that had happened during an attempted launch in October of the previous year, but everything went on without a problem and the mission was a total success. It was also one of the earliest successful landings of a Falcon 9 booster, which detached several minutes after launch and was guided back down to an autonomous ship called Just Read the Instructions. The onboard cameras provide an incredible view of the landing process in action. You'll see the boosters firing to control the speed and angle of the descent. With just seconds to go, the shape of the landing ship can be seen, with an X marking the target, and then the landing legs pop out ready to provide the extra stability once it's touched down on the platform. Finally, the view from the camera on the ship shows just how perfectly the Falcon 9 has positioned itself on the landing pad, and shortly after this, a clamp will hold on to it to keep it upright while the ship makes its way back to port, so everything can be checked over in time for the next flight. Number 5. SN10 
SN10, which stands for Serial Number 10, was, as the name would suggest, the tenth version of the Starship prototype that SpaceX had built to test, and it was scheduled for a high-altitude test on the 3rd of March 2021. SpaceX was hoping for a much better outcome than their previous two attempts, SN8 and 9, which both resulted in a fiery end during their landing and had installed significant upgrades across virtually every element of the ship's design to make it sturdier and easier to control. At 6.15 in the early evening, which was much later than originally been planned because of an earlier computer fault, it launched from the test facility near Boca Chica in Texas, and crowds from miles around gathered to watch it soar into the sky. Within a matter of minutes, just like its predecessors, SN-10 reached its target altitude of 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers, and it was at this point that the engines disengaged in order for it to attempt to return to Earth and land back at the test facility. It hovered at that altitude for a moment and then performed a horizontal descent and landing flip maneuver to get itself in the correct position for touchdown. This time, though, instead of approaching the ground at too high a velocity, the engine managed to execute a burn that slowed it down to the perfect speed for landing, and after the landing gear had extended, it became the first Starship prototype to return back to the ground, marking a huge step in the design of reusable spacecraft. This wasn't the end of the story of this test, though. Witnesses soon noticed that several flames were still visible near the base of the ship after it had landed, and kept the cameras rolling to see what would happen next. For them, this meant that they captured an incredible sight, as around 8 minutes later at 6.30 p.m., the 165-foot or 50-meter-tall vehicle exploded with such force that it actually lifted back up into the air before crashing back down onto the ground. While this test represented a major step forward in the design, this ending clearly prevented the spacecraft from being reusable, so the engineers had no choice but to go back to the drawing board and after combing through all the data that had been collected, figure out a way to prevent this from happening again. Number 4. SAOCOM 1B SAOCOM is an Argentinian Earth observation satellite network that currently has two satellites in sun-synchronous orbits that are used to monitor parts of the radio spectrum in the low end of the microwave range, and a type of radar that can be used to create topographical images of the planet's surface, with the aim of monitoring and even predicting natural disasters around the globe. It was seen as an incredibly ambitious project for the Argentine space agency, CONE, and after the successful launch of the first satellite, they contracted SpaceX to launch the second, known as SAOCOM 1B. Originally, the plan was to launch it from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California in early 2020, but plans had to change, and it was instead rescheduled for a late August launch in that year from Cape Canaveral. While this would normally be an unimportant change, it actually turned an everyday mission into one of some significance, as when it launched, it became the first time SpaceX had sent a craft into polar orbit from the East Coast, and for the first time that a launch used the Southern Polar Corridor to orbit from Cape Canaveral since 1969. There's a reason for this, of course, and that's because this trajectory takes the rocket over the southern coast of Florida and Cuba, and the general aim is to avoid flying over populated areas. It represented a shift in policy and enormous faith in the reliability of SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch system, a trust that was further justified by the booster's successful landing. This was the fourth time that this Falcon 9 had been used for launch, having previously been used to send cargo resupply missions to the ISS, and to take the Starlink satellites into orbit. On this occasion, it performed perfectly too, and when the booster detached, it made a controlled descent back towards Cape Canaveral, and performed a textbook touchdown at Landing Zone 1, which is just a few miles away from the original launch site. Number 3. Side Booster Landing now operating the most reliable launch vehicles in the world, SpaceX takes payloads into orbit for various different customers. But perhaps the most important that they work with is the United States government. In November of 2022, US SF-44 took off from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, and it was controversial to say the least. That's because SpaceX usually provides some details of what they're taking into space, but this time, one of the two satellites on board was classified and being launched for the U.S. Space Force. As there was also another commercial satellite on board and a number of other unannounced payloads, the SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch vehicle was used, and this was the first time one of these had launched for three years. Usually when a Falcon 9 is used to launch a satellite, it will take the payload to what's known as a geostationary transfer orbit from where the satellite will then propel itself into its final orbit position above the Earth. 
The use of a Falcon Heavy, however, provides enough thrust to insert a payload directly into its intended orbit without the need for its interim stage. This obviously means the Falcon Heavy is a much larger and more powerful rocket, and it's actually made up of three boosters for the first stage. A central core booster and two side boosters, with each being made up of nine Merlin 1D engines, which is the same as what's in a Falcon 9 launch vehicle. Due to the complexity and the valuable cargo on board, this was an incredibly important launch for SpaceX, and you could feel the tension in the air during the countdown. At 9.41 a.m. local time on the 1st of November, exactly as planned, the vehicle rose up from the Kennedy Space Center and U.S. Space Command later confirmed that the mission had been a complete success. For SpaceX, there was even more cause for celebration, though, because it was a chance for them to show their capability for landing the Falcon Heavy side boosters as well. Two and a half minutes after takeoff, once they had expended all the launch fuel, the side boosters detached and then performed a maneuver that flipped them over for landing. They then conducted what's known as a boost back burn, which keeps control over their descent trajectory and puts them on course to return to the landing pads. And then, once they've re-entered the atmosphere, perform a landing burn to slow them down enough. It was a cloudy day when this all happened, and video footage shows the amazing moment when the two side boosters emerged from cloud cover above Kennedy Landing Zone 1 and 2 and make a perfect landing. Number 2. SN11 when testing new rocket designs, you normally want to wait for the ideal weather conditions because things can be tricky enough on a clear day, let alone when there's a storm. So even though SpaceX's SN11 test was originally scheduled for March the 25th of 2021, it wasn't able to take place until five days later. At first, there had been an issue with one of the Raptor engines on the Starship, and then the conditions weren't right. But by 8 a.m. on that morning at the test site near Boca Chica in Texas, there were green lights across the board for the launch. As with other SN tests, the idea was for it to reach a set altitude before performing a series of maneuvers and returning to land back at the launch site. And to begin with, things were going to plan. The Starship reached a height of 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers before conducting a series of engine burns to prepare it for landing. But then the SpaceX cameras, which usually broadcast the entire event, cut out six minutes after launch. The commentator simply said, looks like we've had another exciting test of Starship number 11 and that Starship 11 is not coming back. Don't wait for the landing. Amongst murmurs between the crowds watching, the launch pad was now covered with a dense fog, so it would have been almost impossible to see the rocket landing even if it tried to do so. But then something so completely unexpected happened. A huge explosion pierced through the fog, and it became very clear that something catastrophic had taken place during the attempt. Soon after, Elon Musk tweeted to say that one of the engines had encountered a fault during the takeoff, and then during the landing burn was unable to reach the required operating chamber pressure. He said, though, that this wasn't actually needed because there are so many different backups and ways around problems like this, so it was likely a completely different issue that resulted in that explosion. The true cause of this incident was never revealed, but fortunately it happened during test conditions, which meant that every piece of data and equipment behavior was being carefully monitored, and the SpaceX engineers were able to redesign the concept to overcome the flaw. It wasn't long after this that they performed a successful landing of a Starship prototype, seemingly having ironed out any issues and presumably deciding that it's still not a good idea to try to land a rocket under a thick cover of fog. Number 1 the first landing on a drone ship. The technology required to allow boosters to safely land after being used adds an extra complexity to the already highly complicated business of sending rockets into space. And as a further cost-saving and safety measure, SpaceX introduced the idea of landing them on an autonomous floating platform in the ocean. When they first announced this, many in the space community thought it was a crazy idea, and the first few failed attempts only seemed to back that up. Everything changed, though, in April of 2016 with the CRS-8 flight. The mission was to take off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base with a Dragon capsule on a Falcon 9 rocket, which would transport 7,000 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station as part of the 8th commercial resupply mission. SpaceX decided to use this launch as an opportunity to test their ability to land on a floating platform again, but had made some serious improvements to the design since the previous two failures. According to Elon Musk, the benefits of landing like this are not only that it's cheaper and safer, but also means the rockets are able to perform better. When landing on the ground, a booster can't be traveling any faster than 6,000 kilometers per hour by the time that the stages separate. But this figure increases to 9,000 kilometers per hour for a water platform landing, 
Clearly, this means larger payloads can be carried further up into orbit, which means the launch can be more effective and profitable. As there had been several failures, SpaceX didn't hype this attempt landing as much as they had done previously, and in many ways it was an afterthought during the planning for the mission, and seen as nice to have. In the end, though, the flight on April 8th would be one of the most groundbreaking moments of recent spacefaring history, as the booster separated as planned and gently glided back down to make a perfect landing on top of the drone ship named Of Course I Still Love You. With experts describing the moments as witnessing something as revolutionary as the first moon landing, SpaceX single-handedly kick-started a new era of spaceflight, one where boosters, which cost around $62 million each, can routinely land themselves and be reused, which is both cheaper and a more efficient way of reaching orbit than anyone else has yet managed to do. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.